Hi, welcome back everybody. Hope you had a great lunch. Um, so now to kick off the um, afternoon of the first day, um, we've got a great speaker, Chris Newnham, who's joint MD of Wilkin & Sons. So Chris, over to you. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, it's a great pleasure to be with you this afternoon. Uh, my name is Chris Newnham. Um, I'm Joint Managing Director of Wilkin & Sons. Um, we're based in Tiptree in Essex. Um, I'm going to talk to you about tradition and innovation and the application of AI in a progressive farming business. What I'd like to do is to uh, take you through a little bit about our business, give you a little bit of background and context to where we're coming from. Um, and I will then uh, take you through some of the technological innovations that we have uh, employed in recent years and some of the current projects that we have in the pipeline. Um, I should caveat all this by saying that I'm talking to you really as, as a business owner, uh, as a farmer, and not as a great technical expert, but I'll try and deal with your questions in due course as best I can. So please bear with me. So to set the scene for our business, um, we have a business that's built on the foundations and the values of uh, quality, integrity, independence, and innovation. It really is the foundation on which uh, our, our business is built and the ethics that we very much try to adhere to um, with everything that we do. Um, and this is nowhere better exemplified than through our Little Scarlet uh, strawberry. Little Scarlet is very much our, our flagship product. Um, it, it is a unique berry, really intense in flavor, tiny berry as you can see from the photograph. Um, it's unique to us. Nobody else in the world is, is arguably daft enough to try and grow it. It's very difficult to grow, particularly difficult to pick. Um, we've grown it on site for more than 120 years. Um, but we've adapted the way that we grow it to use more modern tabletop production systems in recent years. And the most important thing for you to remember about Little Scarlet is that it is James Bond's favorite jam. So just to explain a little bit about our business, um, the, the, the holding company, uh, if you like, is Wilkin & Sons. And under the Wilkin & Sons umbrella, we have a number of brands, uh, foremost amongst which is the Tiptree brand, but we have a chain of tea rooms. Um, we have a Christmas pudding manufacturer in Coles Puddings. Um, we have a patisserie business, which is based in Whittam, um, serving the, the food service sector. Tough going for those guys at the moment. Um, we have a couple of other jams in our portfolio, Thursday Cottage, uh, which is a, 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 an artisan uh, jam, um, and Jules and Sharpie, which is based on chili jams. Um, and we also have a thriving fresh fruit business. We are a, a truly integrated, vertically integrated business. We go all the way through from primary production in the fields through to manufacturing and, uh, of course, our tea rooms at the end of the journey. Um, as things stand today, we export to about uh, in excess of 70 countries around the world, and that gives you a flavor of some of the countries that we, we are currently exporting to. About 75% uh, of our business is in the UK, but about 25% of our business is, is in the export sphere. Um, in terms of our structure and ownership, um, we are... Uh, we have been on a journey for the last 25 odd years uh, towards employee ownership, and we, we've just reached tipping point in that respect. So uh, not dissimilar to the John Lewis partnership, um, collectively, our staff now hold voting control within our business. So to come on to talk a little bit about our production systems and the, the journey that we've been on over the last 25 or so years. Um, 25 years ago, you would have seen a scene pretty much like this. We were growing our strawberries in the ground, uh, bare ground production, um, very, very traditional, really as traditional as, as, it, as it came. So in about 2002, 2003, um, we innovated and we went to growing uh, our 
strawberries on raised beds in the soil and a scene that looked pretty much like this. We then progressed another four or five years later to growing our strawberries in grow bags, as you can uh, make out in this bottom picture on raised beds, but again in the field, but with the first application of polytunnels to protect the crop. You can just see the frames for those polytunnels. And that led to a scene that looked pretty much like this. Um, very lush, thriving crops, but uh, in an open field situation. So we move forward to the period from 2010 to 2020, and that evolution continues. Uh, the grow bags that we were growing in on the soil are moved onto uh, tabletop platforms, as you can see in this picture. Um, this is actually a picture uh, of some of our uh, apricot orchards and our cherry uh, orchards in particular. And you can see we start to protect those crops with polythene, uh, polythene tunnels. And then we move through into our new growing system, our imaginatively named tip tree new growing system, which is an oscillating tabletop system, very, very intense. Um, and we've got a little video that I will show you uh, on the next slide, which will give you more of a flavor of the application of technology there. So, uh, to just set the scene for this, this is this is our, uh, as I've already mentioned, this is our new growing system. Um, it, it gives you a flavor of how we've employed AI in a number of ways, particularly for irrigation, climate control, fertilizer usage, and actually uh, fung fungicide applications. So I will just, hopefully the technology will work for me. I'll just set this running and I'll stay quiet for a moment or two. This NGS tunnel installation represents the first of its kind in the UK. We're extremely excited about it. The system offers multiple benefits, not least of which is the ability to maximise the production area. In a conventional production system, we're essentially cropping every second row. But with the NGS system, we have the ability to crop 100% of the area. And not only that, we also have the ability to increase the plant density. On our conventional strawberries, we're cropping at the rate of about 50,000 plants a hectare. At its most extreme in here, we have up to 200,000 plants a hectare. We have gutters on the roof of the structure where we collect the water, all the rain, all the dew in the morning, and we send it back to the reservoir. We believe with the rainfall in this region, we're going to be 80% self-sufficient. We also collect all the water which runs off the plant or the bags and then put it back to the reservoir and use it again. So we've got a 0% waste. Where we are farming in the driest part of the driest county, it represents a huge opportunity for us to capture rainwater from the roofs and to give us the ability ultimately to increase this area and grow more fruit as a result. Our new growing system has fully integrated climate control, so everything is working automatically. When the temperature rises, the vents are opening, vents on the top, vents on the sides, and letting air in into the greenhouse, and that way it cools the temperature down. Our system is fully enclosed. It's giving workers much better working condition. They're not exposed to the environment. Also, as it is fully enclosed system, we can produce strawberry for longer. We're starting much early in the springtime and continuing much later in the autumn. Ultimately, the great benefit of the system is the benign environment that it creates. We've got much, much lower pest and disease pressure in here, and we have the ability to draw lots of air through the tunnels and essentially keep the plants nice and dry, keep humidity levels low. Um, all that leads to what is ultimately the acid test, and that's eating the berry, and I'm delighted to say that these are fantastic. We've grown fruit on site for 
something over 150 years and the company has always been innovative over that time where, whether it's adopting new production techniques or planting new varieties. The installation of this NGS system represents the next stage in that process of evolution. It's cutting edge technology and keeps us right at the forefront of the fruit industry. So I hope that gives you a flavour of, of where we have got to at this point in time, um, where, where, as you will have gathered, we're extremely proud of the innovation of our, our NGS uh, system. Um, but the journey doesn't stop there. You know, we, we, we carry on. So what are we looking at uh, in terms of future projects and future application of AI within our business? Uh, well, the, the, the most uh, immediate or the, the immediate project that we've, we've literally started working on over the last few weeks is real-time crop health monitoring and early de detection of plant disease using Internet of Things and computer vision. So first up is our wise farmer. Um, experienced gardeners and crop growers can identify problems in their produce whether that is a lack of water, scorching from the sun, or diseases and pests. Even something as subtle as a change in fruit color can indicate that a problem could decimate swathes of crop, causing significant harm um, to producers. Oops. We then have our confused farmer. As currently, these problems can only be detected by people with experience. Not only is gaining suitable experience difficult, but using humans to monitor crops takes up huge amounts of resource. You either need to pay lots of people to cover large areas of ground quickly or hire fewer, fewer people, but accept that a problem may not be caught in time. And we cue Wally then. Um, our, our collaborative project combines the Internet of Things and computer vision with expertise on plant disease. The project is enabled by both terrestrial and aerial monitoring based on sensors and on-site cameras, as well as a drone equipped with a hyperspectral camera. A data fusion platform will be developed that will be fed with uh, the, the collected data and we'll compare it to information on known problems in order to de detect the signs and symptoms of different plant diseases. This may include the soil, the soil or growing media, weather conditions such as drought, the growth of fruit, the size or color of the fruit, the color of stems and leaves, or any unusual patterns that indicate a possible infection. As soon as a potential problem is identified, site staff will be notified not only of the exact location of the problem, but also about the potential uh, about the potential problem, along with a recommendation for corrective action. Um, and we hope it won't quite look like Wally, but we'll look at a little bit more like the following. Um, we anticipate. Uh, a, a, having a number of drones um, on regular patrol um, monitoring our crops for us and feeding back accordingly. And this leads to uh, us utilizing the, the technology. Um, the farm field will be checked continuously and in real time without any effort from humans. This means that experienced staff can be deployed to other areas of the business, improving workforce efficiency. Which brings me on to my final picture on this slide, which is an interaction of uh, different ecosystems. By identifying problems in their earliest stages, we can ensure that we treat the issue before it becomes severe. This may involve treating specific plants to stop the disease spreading and infecting more of the crop 
uh, this will save money and effort, reduce dependency on fungicides. Uh, we actually, we hope ultimately eliminating fungicides um, while enhancing yield and the quality of our produce. Um, you'll appreciate from a, the ecosystem slide that there are, there are three strands. We've got the edge, which is the data collection point of actuation. We've got the data collation element, and then we have the deliverables on the right-hand side. This then brings me on to the second project on which we are working, uh, Project Versatile, which is a co configurable smart indoor harvesting of sweet peppers, tomatoes, and strawberries. Um, this is a collaborative uh, UK China project in conjunction with the University of Essex, Dalian University of Technology, Shenyang University of Agriculture, and Haicheng Shangzi, Shangjing Ecological Agriculture. Um, and we're grateful with all of these, as we were with our, our previous project as well, where we've had uh, wonderful support from Innovate UK, but with our project Versatile, again, support from Innovate UK, um, the University of Essex. And I should have mentioned previously as well, the, the knowledge transfer network. Um, so, the versatile approach um, is one of uh, configurable uh, perception, um, general ad adversarial networks, uh, deep learning, um, configurable action, um, PMP, passive motion, motion paradigm, um, intelligent environmental control, all of which um, we hope will lead to um, ultimately a, a fantastic robotic harvesting solution. Sorry, I'm not being particularly eloquent there. I'll try harder. Um, why Project Versatile and why now? Well, it's all to do with the demographics within our industry. Um, availability of labor is, is a continual challenge. Um, the government, um, fortunately, have given us an enhanced seasonal agricultural worker scheme this year, which will help. Um, but we had last year, you, you, many of you will be aware of the Pick for Britain campaign, which has run, labor is always a challenge. Um, we need to, for, for those very, very basic tasks, we need to try and automate what we're doing. Um, Labor gets more and more expensive, so the economies of being able to harvest our uh, crops at an effective price is extremely important. Um, we've already talked about the innovations that, that we've brought through in growing technology. Um, there is a real drive to try and eliminate um, pesticides uh, within our cropping environments. We've done that very successfully with insecticides. We use an awful lot of biological controls this year to control pests within crops. Um, but the next step is to eliminate those fungicides. Um, we hope that through the application of technology that the, the uh, health and hygiene of the plants will be able to pick more thoroughly than we are currently. And as a consequence, um, produce a higher percentage of class one produce from our crop. So this really just uh, reinforces many of those, those points. Um, we are looking at, and this, this is what the guys at the university and Vishu in particular have imaginatively named the beast. Um, I hope once it uh, presents itself in the field, it won't look quite so ungainly, um, but will be really effective. We think we can drive down our manual labor inputs by uh, a good 60%. We will never eliminate them absolutely because there will always be jobs that require some sort of human intervention. Um, we expect to see enhanced production because they don't uh, drop or bruise the fruit, fruit to the extent that maybe human uh, our, our human pickers do. Um, it must be, to be successful, it has to be commercially viable, it has to be delivered at an affordable price point, and it has to be useful to everybody. Um, I think that's pretty much all I have to say. Um, 
I will be delighted to interact with you and take any questions that you might have and look forward to chatting further with you uh, in due course. So thank you very much for, for listening. Um, I hope you have a, a better flavor of what our business is all about, where we've come from and where we're heading to. Thank you. Okay, Chris, hi. Thank you so Hello. much. Hi, for a fantastic talk. Um, we've learnt loads there. And if nothing else, we have also learnt that Bob Scott loves your little scarlet strawberries <laughs> that go into your jam. And he used to pick them as a child. So yeah, he's, 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 he's obviously got great taste and great perseverance. Absolutely. <laughs> um, so we would love to just ask a few more questions of your um, self, Chris, if that's okay. I was really fascinated by the new growing system um, that you talked to. Um, I particularly like the recycling of the water so there's no wastage and all, all, the, all of that. Um, I guess when we're thinking about artificial intelligence, I'm wondering what your thoughts are in terms of how you see artificial intelligence applied to the scenario where you might need to let more air into the tunnels or you might need to add more water. What, what do you, can you talk to that a little bit for us, Chris? I can certainly try. Um, so I think we are, we are very much on a journey with this whole uh, artificial intelligence, intelligence piece. Um, and, and I guess my definition as a, as a simple farmer of what constitutes arti artificial intelligence may not square necessarily with some of the, the highbrow science that I've been listening to today. Um, but, you know, if you're looking at our new growing system, it's got a central brain that is currently controlling, um, yeah, it's, it's controlling the climate, it's controlling the irrigation of the crop, mm -hmm. um, that's controlling humidity within the crop and is linking all of those elements together. I think as we as we continue on this journey, particularly with the the projects that we're working on with the university at the moment, I think you know that that's going to broaden its scope no end, and the opportunity to start to link some of those projects back with that central brain, so that you know, in terms of disease early disease detection in crops, if we're picking up fungal pathogens, maybe you know two weeks earlier than we would otherwise do with the, the human eye, um, we have the ability to integrate all of that with the climate control so that we're affecting you know, an, a, 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 a climate solution to a problem rather than having to intervene at a later stage with fungicides. Oh, Absolutely. that's a fantastic opportunity. And actually, and, and I guess tying it in then, Chris, with um, one of the other projects you talked about, which was the uh, the University of Essex, I think, project with IoT and computer vision. Um, uh, do, you, do you see a way of um, where ultimately using computer vision to assess the crops themselves could actually be um, used to optimise the sort of the harvesting of those crops and again, in, inform that brain uh, a little more, not just about the disease necessarily, but actually about the optimum sort of yield and harvest of those those crops? Uh, I think there's there's a couple of answers to that question. I think, you know, immediately, if we we, we can certainly optimise our harvest as a result of the work that we're doing, you know, if we, if we can detect problems within the crop before they've they've got to a point where they they are pro having an economic impact on that crop um that is only going to benefit us in the long term and and our ability as a consequence of that to harvest you know a much higher percentage of class 1 fruit from that crop will have a, will have a, a very positive impact on the bottom line um yeah, and I think in terms of you know in, in in terms of the crop visioning and crop forecasting and trying to look ahead to what's coming down the road, I think in due course it's not a primary driver of what we're trying to do at the moment, but it, it is certainly a logical extension to what we, we we are trying to do. So you know if we're collecting that data from the crop and we have a much better kind of view of what's coming forward long term, our programs are obviously more accurate accurate to our customers and you know uptake of the crop hopefully will be better as a consequence of that yep makes sense thank you chris slightly 
different question, but you talked about your project Versatile. And interestingly, in the chats down the, the end, um, at the edge, I, I saw Fox Robotics was trying to ask a question. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if it might have related, actually knowing what they do. Um, but what do you, or when do you expect to eliminate manual labor from the farm? OK. Um, we will never, I don't think we will ever eliminate man, manual labor from the farm. Um, I think, you know, the, 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 the complexity and diversity of the tasks that we got, that we have to do, mean that there will always be a manual intervention at some point in time, whether that's, you know, uh, planting, weeding, maintaining the crops. Um, you know, there are jobs that are always going to require the human eye. Um, having said that, far and away, the biggest individual task within any crop is the harvesting of the crop. And, you know, harvesting of a crop mm. represents anything up to 40% plus of the cost of producing that crop in the first place. It, it, it is a hugely disproportionate number. So that is where our focus is at the moment. Um I think it's going to take, you know, I think we are, we are, we are on, we are in a marathon and certainly not a sprint. Um, we, it's going to take us quite a while to get to where we want to be in terms of developing the system um, to a point where we have a viable prototype and then finessing that. Um, so I think we're in it for the long haul, um, but it has the potential, you know, it has the potential to eliminate the vast majority of, of manual harvesting within the crop. And that's the single biggest issue that, or the single big, biggest challenge that we face. Sure, sure. And Chris, so I guess that obviously has a massive impact on the costs um, of running the farm, um, if you're able to do that. Um, but I, I guess just to, to turn it a little bit, do you, do you ever see a point where you're, you're obviously at the forefront of technology um, in, in farming. Um, do you ever see a point where um, the, the costs will sort of level out of implementing these brains um, and therefore um, the, you, you'll be saving a lot of money? Or do you actually think that actually technology is just going to evolve and evolve and evolve um, so that you always have to be at the forefront? You, you have to keep um, innovating in order to, to optimize your, your work. Yeah, I, uh, look, I, I don't think you, you, you can never stand still. Um, you know, I, I, I took you on a very brief journey of how, how our business has changed over the last 20 years. That pace of change is only going to accelerate. So I think, you know, we will, we will be adding and adapting all the way along. I think in terms of the, the, the immediacy of the harvesting problem that we've got, um, you know, the, 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 the most important element of that is that the technology that's, that's solving the problem for us is delivered to us at a viable price point. Um, so, you know, if it's going to cost us one or two pounds a kilo to pick our fruit, then, then it doesn't work and it never will work. Um, but if we can deliver it at a much lower uh, cost per unit picked, um, then it has, you know, it, it has a, a, a very significant place for us. But I think, you know, we, 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 we will always be adapting. The technology will always be evolving. Thank you very much, Chris. Darren was just pointing out um, one of the comments from Suffolk County Council there in terms of how um, this improves our ability to farm and be more sensitive. Be more environmentally friendly, yeah. absolutely. I wondered, Chris, whether you wanted to expand a little bit on that as well, about the environmental impact and how actually this could be beneficial in the long run. Yeah. Um, well, so uh, looking at our new growing system, I mean, it, it, it's a pretty virtuous system that we've engaged. Um, one of the biggest drivers for us in, our, in, in farming in the part of the world that we're farming in is, is lack of available groundwater. So um, we can only continue to increase the range and volumes of crops that we're growing by harvesting rainwater. The growing system, our NGS growing system allows us to harvest rainwater and it's about 90% 90, 90 self-sufficient in terms of water harvested from the structure versus water used by the crops. So that's a massive benefit for us. Um, but beyond that, because of the climatic controls that we've got, um, we're able to uh, ensure that we've we've got optimum um, an, an optimum growing environment within the crop. Um, so disease incidence is is much lower than has historically been the case with with outdoor grown crops that weren't protected. Um, but most importantly, because it, it's it's 
a closed unit, we have the ability to control pests absolutely. So we, we have eliminated in that crop uh, the use of insecticides. So we use biological controls to, to, to control any pest problems that may arise within there, yeah. essentially bugs that are eating other bugs. Um, and of course, then the work that we are doing is, is with the university is now geared at eliminating fungicides within that crop as well. Perfect. So, uh, you know, it's got multiple benefits um, th that are environmentally very, very positive. Brilliant. Which is fantastic. Absolutely brilliant. And obviously the driest region, as you say, of the country with the water conservation as well. That's fantastic as well. Chris, thank you so much uh, for both a fascinating uh, keynote speech and also for a really uh, great colour there that you've brought through with our questions. So thank you very much. Thanks, Chris.